Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Ask the HR Expert. This is our monthly webinar series at Tandem HR. Um, and today's topic is navigating remote work challenges. So I know people are still filing in. I can see people popping in. So while that's happening, I uh, just wanted to take time to introduce myself uh, and explain what, what this is, what we're doing here today, and provide some uh, housekeeping and ground rules. So to start off, my name is Marcus Wilbers. I am the Chief Client Officer and General Counsel here at Tandem HR, um, and I'll be the moderator for today's presentation. Uh, Ask the HR Expert is a webinar series that we do uh, once a month on a series of uh, HR topics. Uh, we cover a wide variety of topics, uh, such as how to complete I-9 forms, um, leaves of absence, um, hosting a successful open enrollment, uh, how to do successful performance management, um, how, to, how to be an effective HR resource or HR department of one, um, things that we think will be generally applicable to uh, people that are charged with navigating HR issues for their companies. So um, if you have any topics or any suggestions or ideas you'd like us to consider, uh, please let us know. Uh, we'd, we'd, love to, we'd love to cover them. Um, our topic today is navigating remote work challenges. Um, and that's something that uh, we've all kind of had to become more and more familiar with in the last couple of years. So very excited to talk uh, about that with you. Uh, but before we begin, I want to make everyone aware that we are recording the webinar today. Uh, and if you registered for the webinar, you will get a copy of the recording um, in your inbox uh, shortly after we conclude. Um, all audience members have been placed on mute, um, and that's not because we don't want to hear from you. Um, it's so that we can hear uh, what's being said and follow along. Um, if you do have questions, uh, comments, things you'd like to share, um, I do have the question and answer uh, queue up on my screen. If you look down at the bottom of your toolbar, there's a QA, and a uh, the little word bubbles. Click that and you can send us questions or comments or anything that you want to share during the presentation. I'll try and incorporate them as we go. Uh, if we're not able to do that, I'll address them at the end, and we'll leave some time at the end for, for questions, too. Um, and at the end of the presentation, I'll share my contact information, so if there's something that we didn't get to or a question that you have that's maybe a little more personal or specific to your organization, please feel free to send it my way, and uh, we'll get you the best answer that we can. So, all right. So, with all that being said, I want to introduce our panel today. We've got a lot of uh, good experts here. Uh, to give you their perspectives on navigating uh, remote work challenges. So I'll let the speakers introduce themselves. We have Kirk, Lisa, Gabby, and Jackie. So who wants to kick us off? I'll go ahead and take it, take it from here, Marcus. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. My name is Jackie Boyd. I am an HR business partner here at Tandem HR, and I joined the Tandem team back in July of last year after 11 prior years in the PEO industry. Today's topic is very hands-on and personal to me as I maintained a hybrid work schedule from 2015 to 2019, then work moved to a 100% remote work schedule once the pandemic hit in 2020. I am still a remote employee to this day while living in Florida, and Tandem's home office is in Chicago. We're very excited to share our experience through personal and client experiences with you. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're excited to have you. Lisa, I'll hand it off to you. Thanks, Jackie. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this series. My name is Lisa Brock. I'm the HR business partner here at Tandem HR, and I've been with the team since July 2020, so right in the thick of it that year when a lot of things were going to fully remote. So really excited to talk on this topic. Um, I've been in a variety of industries, right, you know, ranging from healthcare and manufacturing. So, you know, have a gamut of um, experience around HR. So this is an exciting topic for us to discuss today. And like Jackie said, um, you know, she's been remote since being with Tandem and I myself am a still a remote, fully remote employee within Tandem. So great. So we'll, we'll have some great takes on this from our own personal experience and what we do well here at Tandem HR. Okay, thanks so much, Lisa. Hi, everybody. My name is Gabby Braddock. I'm a team lead here of HR Client Relations at Tandem HR. I have been here for just over three years and have been providing HR services within the PEO world for just about over 20 years. So pretty passionate about PEO. 
Um, and like Jackie and Lisa stated, I too, as many of us, have been working remote over the last three plus years. And even prior to then, was uh, have been doing a lot of hybrid work as well. So um, really great topic for all of us to explore today. And very happy to be part of the discussion. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Thanks, Gabby. Uh, my name is Kirk Davis. I am the uh, Director of HR Client Relations here at Tandem. I've been with Tandem for just about a year and a half now. Um, and I'm excited about this topic too, not only because I see our clients kind of struggle with some of these remote work challenges, and certainly we see more and more change on the horizon with trying to get us back to work and all the different things that we're struggling with. But I'm exceptionally excited today because two of my team members who are also remote are on this call with me today. So it'll be exciting to talk about the dynamic of some of the things that we see within our own teams and some of the struggles and challenges that we have and ways that we can recommend that we navigate some of these kind of tricky issues in the remote workspace. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. So we're going to start by uh, covering some questions uh, that we've received from our registrants um, and also some questions that we have encountered with our clients and things that, that we think are applicable to this topic. Um, and, and I'm excited that this is a topic that, uh, like you all shared, we can share personal experiences on because it's something that we do at Tandem too. So I guess just to kick us off, um, I like to ask like an orienting question uh, just so that we can be sure that we're all on the same page. So when we talk about remote work, um, let's be clear about what we're talking about and how companies have had to deal with that uh, more and more over the last four years um, during COVID. So when we say remote work, what, what are we really talking about? Who wants to start us off there? I'll take it. I think we're, go, go ahead, ahead. Jackie. Remote work, I mean, hey, we're working outside of a physical office. We're working from home, from anywhere, from your local Starbucks, from a library. It's nice and quiet. Um, but like like we've all said, much of this started during COVID. Um, we were forced to work from home. There was no choice. A lot of companies panicked. A lot of companies were okay with it. They already had hybrid work schedules. Um, so for that, for that being said, um, remote work, again, outside of an office, if you have any employees working not from your physical office. Go ahead, Kirk. Yeah, and to Jackie's point, I think this, this represents kind of a, a line in the sand, if you will, for where we start with remote workers, because a lot of us are in environments where we were kind of thrown into the mix, right? Like employees had to go work remotely and we kind of had to struggle with how we were going to do that, develop the technology. And a lot of us since coming out of that dynamic have not necessarily revisited this topic with our workforce. So it's a great opportunity if you haven't done so to kind of revisit your remote work policies. Um, what are we doing differently three or four years into this than we were when this first started? So what do we need to address? What are some things that are important topics to revisit or change? I mean, obviously the one constant that we've seen in this environment is that it's always changing. So how do we address that in our policies, in our communication with our employees? So I think that's a great starting point of trying to kind of figure out where we've been, where we are, and maybe where the future takes us mm -hmm. as the next step. Yeah, I think this is something that you know, nobody really asked for. It was something that was born out of necessity, you know, working remotely as opposed to, well, you know, in COVID, the government saying you can't congregate in an office, you have to work remotely. Um, and, and I know, you know, we've, we've talked with uh, some clients about um, a return to the office. Um, and just personally, I don't, I don't know if I hear that as much anymore. I think that was a big topic in 2021 and 2022. When are we bringing people back to the office? Um, you know, some businesses I think have done that out of business necessity. Some have been a little more flexible and, and balanced in office and hybrid work. Uh, but what, what have you guys seen uh, with the clients that you work with and how have they maybe changed their position on this over time? 
can I can talk to that a little bit. So in my experience with some of the clients and and other other HR professionals that I um, I have relationships work that I work uh, with also have told me that we've kind of moved a little bit more away from fully returning back to the office and doing more of a hybrid flexible type of arrangement and policies because they find that although you know you might have one end of the spectrum or the other return fully to work or fully remote from home it seems to be right in the middle um, the combination of the two is the sweet spot where you're providing flexibility to those employees meanwhile still having the opportunity to you know go to work or attend meetings at work and see people and and maybe do some team building at um you know back at the office I have to agree with Lisa. I, I've seen a lot more talking with my clients. They've asked for benchmarking, uh, similar companies. What are they doing? What should we do with our staff? You know, and that's a that's a broader question because, you know, how does your staff feel? Have you talked to them? You know, are they feeling a sense of loneliness? And that's something many business owners are seeing that loneliness and isolation impacts their workforce. And I recently saw a study <clears throat> through the social connection that showed 55% of remote workers face a feeling of loneliness to a certain extent. And uh, social connections to for your coworkers can be a basis of meaningful partnerships and lifelong friendships. You know, so talk to your employees, get a gauge of how they're feeling and if a hybrid option is the, mm -hmm. the best option for your workforce or department. Yeah, I have a client that I can speak to as well, where they were very adamant about coming back to the office as soon it was soon as it was plausible to do so. And so they kind of went into a hybrid approach with the idea that they would then eventually be back in the office full time. But what they found is that their employees were just as productive working at home. And of course, this depends on the product or the services that you're delivering. But for them, they found that their original idea of having everyone in the office wasn't necessarily as important as they, they thought it was originally. And so like Kirk said, you know, reevaluating and looking at what your original goal was based upon what has changed in the workplace and what you've learned throughout you know, that process um, really does come into play. And they've ultimately decided on having folks come back in just a certain amount of days per month um, rather than the set schedule that they had originally landed on and it's worked for them. So yeah, very interesting. I think that's some great insight. The only, the other thing that I would share is that, again, to Jackie's point, like really listen to your workforce. We all know that there are some industries that don't have as much flexibility with developing a hybrid work policy. They're going to be manufacturing jobs that are never going to be able to work from home. So we all get that. But to the degree that we do have flexibility within our organizations, if there's an administrative team, if there's an office staff, if there's accountants that you have on staff that maybe can work from home, let's give people that flexibility. Because again, what we're seeing on the retention side mm -hmm. is that employees will stay if they have a little bit more flexibility. That's one of the drivers for them. So let's talk to our workforce. Let's understand what that dynamic is and create ways that we can be more flexible with our workforce. Yeah, I, th I think for me, you guys have, have hit on a lot of really great topics. I think for me, the, the key is really, you know, you got to know your business. Mm -hmm. um, and not just from a, a products and services standpoint, but, but you got to know that too, right? Like manufacturing jobs can't be in the office, right. Uh, or, or can't be, can't be remote. You got to be, you know, building something, you got to be on the line. Uh, but even like department by department, um, in your, in your, in your business, um, like it, for example, it people have been comfortable with remote work for a long time. And that is kind of baked into their expectations for their job. And so if you take a blanket approach to like, well, even if we are a manufacturing firm, everyone's going to be back in the office. It might not be the, the correct approach for every department uh, within your business. And then knowing your business from a, from a people standpoint too, what do your employees want? What will they tolerate? Because, you know, like it or not, the, the, the expectations of work have changed um, over the past four years. And like you guys have said, the flexibility is now 
and it's kind of expected. Um, and I, and I have talked to, you know, some business owners that, you know, were very adamant about like, nope, I need people back in the office. Um, I, I, you know, I need to, uh, people are more productive in the office. I, I even like, I had one business owner say, well, I can't trust people to work out of the office. And the whole time I'm thinking like, you, you don't know your business well enough then. Um, because if you, if you did, you can measure productivity, uh, remotely, That that's not, you know, not that that's easy, but that that's certainly possible, right? So just assuming that people are going to be more productive in the office, I, I would challenge that. I don't I don't know if that's true, you know. Um, okay. Well, how I guess kind of to that point, how can businesses ensure that they're communicating effectively uh, in a remote work or a hybrid uh, work setup? I mean, that's one of the the challenges, right? If, if you're in the office, you can walk down the hall. Or you're just going to have these incidental, you know, collisions, right? You see them at the water cooler, you see them wherever. Mm -hmm. How can you ensure co effective communication when those aren't possibilities anymore? Yeah, that's a good that's a good question, Marcus, and one that I think is 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 asked a lot of our clients and people that we work with to help them out. So, you know, employers can use a combination of tools for, you know, communication and especially collaboration. That's one of our keywords when we talk about remote work or hybrid work is collaboration. You can really leverage those basic video conferencing like Microsoft Teams, Slack, and Zoom. <clears throat> and there's also like the chat and messaging apps for those quick messages or, or alerts you need to get out to somebody. But having like reoccurring meetings with check-ins, um, you know, meetings with your team and employees really helps to keep those lines of open communication going. But I think the next caveat mm -hmm. to that is something that you don't want to just do with remote and hybrid workers. You also do those for in, you know, the, the ones that are there on site is really continue to encourage and coach employees um, consistently how to communicate effectively all around internally and externally so that the information that is coming across is really understood by all you know for example you know coaching on when to video conference versus when to pick up the phone and, and have a discussion um, versus messaging or emailing back and forth you know sometimes that's always uh, a tricky situation or things that we're trying to overcome for challenges when we talk about communication. So whether you're on site or you are a remote or hybrid employee, um, employer too, you want to make sure that you're doing both of those things. So um, just some good ideas there. I don't know if anybody else has some good take on, on um, encouraging that coaching. Yeah, I, not necessarily like encouraging the coaching, but I guess just anecdotally, what I have found is um, since we, you know, we've been doing remote work, I'm much more intentional about uh, meetings, mm -hmm. and and you know, uh, people complain about like oh, I've got so many meetings, but like what I've found is if I if I don't schedule it, if I don't put it on the calendar, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and I think back to like you know before before COVID, before the remote hybrid work was everywhere, it was like, well, yeah, I'll see you at the office tomorrow or yeah, stop by sometime, right? Uh, we, you know, you got to schedule those stop-ins now. Uh, so if you know, make sure that we're communicating, I think it's actually been a positive uh, because now I'm more intentional about like, okay, I need to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with every person on my team. I, I do it weekly. I got to have a one-on-one, -on -one, right? And so it's scheduled. Um, now my calendar looks fuller, um, but, but it's, um, you know, if you don't do that, those, those incidental, like just pop buys, those don't happen. I agree with you, Marcus. I, before going fully remote and still being hybrid, but before all of our types of communication kind of came into play in my previous life, it, it was, you know, emails and sometimes yeah. You pick up the phone, sometimes you don't, and translation can get lost very easily that way, or your message can get lost. Mm -hmm. um, I really find it organizes my day to, to schedule these meetings one by one. Um, and face-to-face -face communication is so much better than, you know, to, someone may be horrible at messaging or, you know, in their, in someone else's eyes, they're horrible at messaging and it may come across dry or rude, what, whatever it may be. But that face-to-face, -face, it, it really makes a difference, especially when you're working with your colleagues and um, you're supposed to be a team. 
Yeah, I think it's easy to get into the, you know, we we're, we fall into those habits of just emailing. And mm -hmm. sometimes we're like, oh, you know what, I think it's just time to pick up the phone. Or like you said, Marcus, keeping those, um, those, you know, meetings scheduled on your calendar. Yep. Yeah, that's something that I don't think I ever talked about once before COVID, but we we talk about it now regularly is like meeting cadence. What's the right meeting cadence? Not just for me and my team, but like as an organization. Like, and, and I know you know at Tandem, um, not that we do it perfect, but that's that's a slide in our orientation now. When we when we bring someone on board, like, hey, here's our meeting cadence. You know, weekly, we, we're, this team is meeting. Biweekly, we're having a town hall. Monthly, we're having this kind of a meeting, um, and it and it seems it can seem a little tedious, but you know, again, it's it's about being intentional about like this is this is when and how we're going to communicate. Yeah, I think one other thing too that you can focus on to reduce the chances of miscommunication is, and this is something that we really didn't think about before COVID. I'm sort of thinking we should just call it BC. Before before COVID. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> we really didn't focus on utilizing document sharing in a way that we do now um, and making it easy to, you know, maintain centralized repositories for documents, project updates, important information that team members need and can also access easily. Um, I just think it's really more important in the, the the world of remote work. And it really helps ensure that everyone is working on the same page, reducing chances of miscommunication. And once again, prior to COVID, document sharing, I personally, I, I had no idea that that was even a thing. And now we use it every day. And it's so important. All I can think, Gabby, is visibility. You know, it gives yeah. everyone, you know, on our team, especially in, in HR, it gives visibility to the same thing. We don't That's have right. to guess, or I can't open this document, all those little run-ins. Is this the latest knowledge. version? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. You can see the updates, yeah. but the visibility, I completely agree. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Yeah, and to Lisa's point earlier, I mean, it that's just one more tool that we have to foster collaboration, right? So now we're working together in different ways because we have those advancements in technology. But I want to go back to something here and just focus on the importance of communication with your team. Like set reasonable and fair and very clear expectations around how you're meeting, when you're meeting, what those meetings are going to look like. Like I have the very fortunate pleasure of managing a remote team and a team that I'm in the office with three days a week. So I'm constantly trying to figure out ways that I balance that dynamic with incorporating my remote team with my live team. So there's all kinds of unique challenges that we have, but if we can as a first step, set clear expectations about what those meetings are going to look like, who's going to be participating, what the expect expectations are with being on camera and communicating in the chat. Are we raising our hand? Like every office is different. Are you jumping in and it's just that kind of dynamic that you have with your team? Or is somebody sitting in the background with their hand raised for 15 minutes waiting for an opportunity to kind of talk in the meeting? Yeah. So being sensitive to those kind of things and setting those sex expectations up front is a very important piece of making sure that those communications are effective. Mm -hmm. That's a good, a good segue too. not just expectations about communication, but expectations about work generally for a remote workforce. I think it's, it's different, right? If, you know, if, if someone, if you're in the office and uh, if we're in a, you know, a complete onsite environment and someone's not showing up or showing up late, you'd have the conversation with them, like, what's going on? You don't see those things, though, um, in a remote environment. So, you know, outside just how we communicate, how do you go about or what policies or how do employers address just these are my expectations for you if you're working remotely? What what have you seen and what do you recommend? I, and how are you going to? Yeah. Go ahead, Lisa. 
Jump well, in. I would say, you know, I've seen that the, you know, the policies, you know, mostly mirror on site when we talk about more like the attendance and confidentiality and an employee, co you know, code of conduct. But with remote work, we've, you know, we've kind of added a little bit more into that as far as like expectations on your dedicated workspace, right? So we got to make sure that there is well equipped. Because, you know, in office, it's already equipped for us. So when we're at home, we want to make sure, you know, how is your Wi-Fi and, and everything that you need at home to do your job. And then also those minimal distractions when you are at home, if you have pets or, you know, things like that, you want to make sure that there's minimal distractions when you are working from home. So some of those added things that we're putting into policies and dress code, you know, it, we obviously have a dress code that might be different at home versus if you're on site, or maybe it's pretty similar depending on your industry. But, you know, we want to make sure that, um, you know, we have the right dress code. And, and for Tandem, we have one specifically in how we how we dress and, and the expectations when we're on camera. And, you know, clients should also do that based on their industry and, and their expectations. So really outlining that um, expectation is, is big. And then those um, those hours of work you know, with different schedules and drawing those boundaries should really be laid out um, to make sure that they get their job duties in the time that they should be and that their colleagues are able to um, reach them um, to, you know, talk to them about anything or collaborate. And then, you know, making sure with those boundaries, it, it helps so that the employees who are working from home they can avoid overworking and, and and doing too much because it's so easy when you're just steps away from your office at home to just, you know, get some more work done. And, you know, we have to encourage self-care too. So very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've seen, um, I guess, when COVID first began and first, you know, we first started working remotely, the team that I was working on, we kind of had a very we had a very informal, um, like general rule, like, Hey, you, you log in in the morning. And when you, when you are like at work or ready for work, it's like, Hey, good morning. I'm here or something like that. Um, that was very, you know, that, that kind of said that you're there, mm -hmm. but, but it didn't do much throughout the day, you know? And so now I think it's more, I've, I've evolved. I think we've all evolved a little bit more. And in a way, it's ironically become maybe a little more intimate where now I know that like, Oh, you know, so-and-so has got a, they got to take their dog to the vet. Um, so they're going to be out for this hour or whatever. And, I, and I'll see that on their calendar, their status, but that's because we've set the expectation that like, Hey, if you're going to be away for more than, you know, half hour, like I need to know that because I, I, I might have something come up where I need to, to talk to you and it's and it's not a problem but the expectation is that you communicate that somehow you know and that's consistent with what we see with interacting with our teams across the board right we've got to establish some trust with the folks that we have we know that remote work allows our employees to have more flexibility but we still have to set expectations about communication um, again, I'm fine if my team wants to come in later and stay late, but I need to know that they're also going to be available if the client reaches out to them. So communicating with me so that we can apply appropriate coverage if needed, if somebody can sub in, um, all of those things come with the expectations. But I think culture is something that we don't often address with the remote workforce because sometimes you can have a separate cu culture for your remote colleagues that is from what's happening in the day-to-day -day office environment. And I think as leaders, managers, <clears throat> people leaders, you've got to be intentional about how you're going to communicate those things and create a culture that fosters good communication and accountability, right? So I'm going to set the expectation that you communicate with me and I'm going to trust you that those things are taking place. But I do have tools in the technology and things that I can see your productivity levels and whatever that I can at the same time hold you accountable. Yes. Yep. And I to have, your point, well, go ahead, Gabby. Oh, I was just going to add that I have clients that I've worked with to actually create formal remote work agreements that speak to all of those things 
So then you can fall back upon those work agreements if you're finding that someone is away from their desk for more than you know that 30 minute time frame, or they're not putting their camera on during meetings, or they're showing up on camera to meetings late or whatever those things may be. So that formal work agreement, remote work agreement is in place so that everyone is clear on what expectations are and the employer has something to go back on um, if those expectations aren't being met. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. And just to back up um, Kirk's point and how important that communication is on both ends from from the leaders of the company down to the employees, but using communication approaches that encourage inclusiveness and employee equality when considering remote working practices because employee engagement is determined by a sense of belonging. Um, employees working from home must have a similar experience to those working in the office. So to your point, it can be very different working in the office to outside yeah. the office. And it goes noticed, you know, I will say in my past, there were, you know, I was let down personally by that feeling. So I've been there. I, I, you know, I put that into my own career, my own practices when coaching uh, clients going forward. I want to tie something that you said, Kirk, and and you said, Gabby. Gabby, you said a client had a remote work agreement, and I I love that because yeah. it's it's hey, we are eye to eye now on what the expectations are. Um, you can't say I didn't tell you. Right, what I expect. Um, and Kirk, you talked about productivity and and how do we how do we monitor that? How do we measure that? That's obviously there's more of an emphasis on that in in remote work, in a remote work environment for you know for for businesses that aren't you know we're not producing products. We may be providing a service. How do we how do we know that that's happening? We we've communicated the expectations, but how do we know that that's happening? What what have you guys seen? How do, how do you recommend companies address that? Like measuring what's done or um, monitoring uh, productivity? Well, again, it starts with good communication. So setting those expectations up front. And here at Tandem, we have tools that we can use to show like the responsiveness to emails and client communication. We have tools that will show like how many, how much time, like we talked about document sharing, like how much time is an individual colleague working on something. So there are metrics and tools that we have at our disposal that can help us with that productivity. Um, but again, another thing is just to Gabby's point with benchmarks and measures, we got to set those metrics and make sure that they're clear and understood up front. Mm -hmm. So we have a metric here at Tandem that we want to be responsive to our clients, and that should happen within a certain time frame. So establishing those metrics and making sure that it's clearly communicated across the organization, and we're not we're not holding our remote colleagues to a different standard. We're holding the entire organization to the same standard. So whatever that metric is for you, putting those into place and making sure that they're clearly communicated and then reporting on those results. And then I would say the last step of that is holding our colleagues accountable when they don't measure up to those metrics. So making sure that the organization knows that we're going to make sure that colleagues are held accountable. And it doesn't matter if you're in the office or you're remote, if you're not meeting the metric, we're going to have that conversation in our one on one. We're going to talk about that and what I can do to support you to make sure that you're reaching those objectives and what's going to happen if you don't. Yep. Yeah. I think there's, again, I, th I think it goes back to like understanding your business. Um, what, what things do, do you need to measure? Uh, what would, what would be good indications that the work is getting done? Yeah. For us, it's call answer rate, responsive rate, you know, email responsive rate, you know, it, it's going to depend on your business. Um, but then, you know, that's, that's like ops operations working with technology, Okay, now how do we measure it? Once we've identified those things, how do we measure those things? And I think maybe there's there's a role for uh, goals too uh, here, um, quarterly goals, even monthly goals, right? Like, you know, to see how see how you're doing, um, and not waiting until like, well, we didn't, you know, we didn't achieve our annual goals, or 
well, we're getting complaints, uh, client complaints. Hey, there's something wrong. You should you know, know before then so you can, can address it um, and measure productivity. Even something simple like you know, time in a document or time logged on. I've actually had to look at that before. Like I'm not, I'm not sensing the level of productivity. IT, can you tell me how long this person was logged in to their computer? Right. It's a very rudimentary tool, but you know, there there are tools like that available. Um, okay. So we talked a little bit about technology. Um what what technology tools do you do you think would you recommend uh, for for making the most out of remote work um, or for enhancing efficiency and collaboration? We've talked about some of them throughout throughout our discussion today, but um, what do you guys think about that? What technology tools would you recommend? One of my personal favorites is something we use in internally here that I was new to coming to Tandem, but it's Salesforce. I think everyone's starting to hear that name more and more. Um, I heard about it years ago, but did not know how awesome it is. Mm -hmm. um, for example, if you have employees in your past that are no longer with your organization and you have someone take pl their place and you're going back on historic data, how hard is it sometimes to dig in their emails and find yeah. important client information or, or, or what, whatever it may be, files? Um, Salesforce really opens that up to that all the emails, all your communication with any any clients or customers is saved. I, I found myself going back years and years, but I'm able to find tangible documents that I needed. And I'm hooraying myself here alone in my office, but it, it is it is a win. <laughs> Salesforce is one of my favorite. I, I don't know if anyone else wants to speak to that, but definitely one of the better tools today. I won't make this a, a Salesforce rah-rah call, but I will echo that sentiment as well. Like one of the things that I love about Salesforce is the ability for multiple people to tackle a problem. So we get a, a client email that comes in and maybe it requires my attention, but it also might require Lisa and Gabby's attention. I can simply like chat them up and say, hey, I'm going to respond to this, but I need your input or I need you to address problem C and Lisa, I need you to address problem B so that we can all kind of tackle this together. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a great collaboration tool. Uh, obviously, we're on Zoom today. We use Teams at Tandem, but I think both of those are great resources. We're learning more and more about the functionality of those tools. So how we can interact and engage with our team as well as our clients more effectively. I think those tools are really helpful with employee engagement as well. Like when I can pop on and see someone face to face and help them get through a difficult issue that they're facing and just address it head on, they can kind of see my reaction. They can see the level of engagement that I have with them. I think those are two great tools. I think too, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna call out Lisa here because she's so good at this that in Teams, and I think that you can do this in Slack as well, but you have the ability to use virtual whiteboarding tools. Mm -hmm. You can um, poll folks who are on the, the call with you to understand, you know, in, even anonymously, you can have people weigh in on ideas. And then you have the ability to make decisions quicker because you have real-time information or real-time tools and platforms to be able to collaborate and and make those decisions. And once again, Lisa has taught us all about how to do that. <laughs> She's great at it. And, I, and a lot of times I forget that we even have the ability to do that. So just even remembering that we have those tools mm -hmm. at our fingertips. Yeah, Teams has been great. They have a lot of resources and it is easy to forget all of the, the resources that are kind of embedded in there until you really start playing with it. But yeah, they have great templates that, you know, if you're trying to problem solve or you're starting a new project, they have templates that to help the whole team out. And it this is one area that you can continue to come back to when you're working on something. So it's great. But going back to Marcus's point at the beginning, where this is where those, those type of softwares that are out there, we know that there's so much to choose from. It's just knowing what's right for your business and your industry. So getting to know those and then, you know, working with different vendors to come in and, and help you make those decisions is, but there, there, there's a lot out there. 
Yeah, I, I think, you know, Salesforce, um, I've not used Slack, I've used Monday, but kind of the idea is like you're tying multiple systems together um, mm -hmm. and then collaborating on it. So yeah, a lot of powerful stuff there, but um, your your IT team will, will um, you know, be critical in, in helping helping bring that together. Yeah, and on, um, just, a, just a one more comment on that, it, just something I thought of. You could run metrics off of programs like this. I mean, especially Salesforce, um, run metrics, how many emails, you know, are we responding timely? So uh, another important feature of, of using a, yeah. a program such as that. I uh, want to do a time check. So it's uh, 10 after um, and we've got 20 more minutes. So um, if you are um, attending and, and you have any questions, um, go ahead and think about those and maybe put them in the in the chat or the, the Q&A section. So we'll do a couple more questions that we have and then um, open it up to anything that we get. So um, let's see, we, we've talked about some of these issues, um, but um, can we talk a little bit about um, how we approach or how companies should approach onboarding and training? for new hires, right? If, if you think about like, again, BC before COVID, you know, someone comes into the office, it's very uh, natural to to show them, hey, we're, we're glad you're here, this is great. It's a very different experience if you're remote, right? You may have a package show up with your technology that you need to figure out. And how, what would you recommend for uh, for companies to approach Hiring, onboarding, and training um, new employees in a remote work environment. I would develop a compre comprehensive virtual onboarding process. That's something we offer here at Tandem. Um, I've been I've used onboarding for employees or myself. Um, very e easy. It provides train and provide training resources behind that. Um, but also I-9s are very important to have signed in person. And something that we piggyback off of here for some of our clients in the remote workforce is I-9 everywhere. And it allows employees to take their documents to a neighbor, to a loved one, to their dog. I'm, I'm joking. But that you can take it to anyone in order to sign <laughs> and verify those documents in person so it, they are validated. So you don't have to travel across the country to home office and, and check out those documents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think uh, really, you know, the next step after that onboarding process, the virtual onboarding process, is being proactive with the technology setup. So, you know, normally, you know, if we were to go into the office, everything's there for us, right? IT's already been in that office. They set up your phone. They've set up your 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 you know your your docking station and your your screens, but. It's a little different if you if, if you're in a different state and they have to ship everything to you. So being proactive, making sure that you you know you get that laptop sooner. The employee that's starting has their cell phone. If you're providing them with that type of um, technology, they have that ahead of time. So on day one, they can log in, they can get everything going, and they can start meeting with everybody and and doing their meet and greets. So um, really being proactive with technology, I think, is a good um, good seg segue into a good onboarding. Experience experience from an employee's perspective when you're you're doing remote. Again, I know <clears throat> I keep focusing on this theme, but I think that it's really important to keep in mind that we want to keep those employees as engaged as possible. And what better time to do that than initially when they're going through the onboarding and orientation process. Like as managers and leaders, if you take nothing away, like do some of these things. Like set up a call with that employee or that applicant before they start, like get some FaceTime with them so that they feel like you want them in that space. If they're remote and they're not going to see you or you may come to their location once a year, use that opportunity to make a good first impression. Like send them some swag, like a tandem, we send them a coffee mug or something. Make them feel like they're part of the organization from day one. Mm -hmm. Set in some regular checkpoints with them, like connect with them, see how they're doing, check in. Connect them with another colleague or somebody else on their team that can informally mentor them. Like it doesn't, again, have to be face to face, but if they know there's another person that they can reach out to or that they can connect with, they'll integrate into the organization that much faster. 
and they'll stay. They'll mm -hmm. feel those extra touches that you're making with them to make sure that they're welcome and it's a great culture and a good fit from that very first week of employment. Mm -hmm. I think too, just to add to making sure that you have all of your technology ahead of time, I think it's also really, really helpful to have an explanation, like even to come with your technology of all of the systems that your company uses. What does each system do? How does it apply to the job that you're going to be doing? Why would I use Salesforce or Power BI, you know, whatever systems that you're using. And then also to talk about the acronyms that are used within the company. How many times have we gone to a new company and we've either never heard the acronym or it means something completely different than it meant at your last company. Great so point. understanding those things from the very, very beginning. So that first call that you get on, you understand what people are talking about, what these tools are, so on and so forth. That's a great point, Gabby. And one of the things that was really helpful for me when I started with Tandem is that department by department listing of here's what happens in this department and here's who you go to for these things. I mean, it was in critical to making sure that I knew where to go to ask the questions that I was struggling with. So doing something like that, that can kind of help people digest the organization because a lot of times they're staring at the screen and that email, they have no idea what the first step is. Like, where do I go? Who do I even ask this question about? So if we can provide them some of that infrastructure in advance as well, that'll be really helpful to their success. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Meet and greets make everything for your employees first week. Meeting and greeting department heads, their team, their, you know, how how is their job going to be impacted by this other department? I, I think that's critical. It gives them a sense of belonging as well to the organization and just not, this is my, this is my job, this is my boss, and this is my team. This, doing it this way and meeting all of your team members within that week or two weeks time really gives you that, that feel of inclusiveness. There's, you said it, Jackie, the belonging. That's what I was thinking of as you guys were talking. There's a book uh, called Culture Code by Dan Coyle, where he talks about belonging cues. Um, so you want to like send these cues to people that, hey, happy that you're here. You you joined um, a, an organization that matters. And and here's what this is all about that, and that you're a part of it. Um, that that you know that builds trust and and that's obviously you know harder to do when you're not in a in the same space so those meet and greets like getting them exposed to people those are all good belonging cues to to help someone feel feel welcome. Mm -hmm. Marcus, I know we got other questions coming in, but I I don't want to miss the opportunity. I told you all up front that I Go ahead. have yeah. some couple people on my team here, and I I want to say like. The other thing that I think is incredibly important is we talked about accountability and setting expectations and good communication with folks, but mm -hmm. you also got to just step out of it every once in a while and just kind of have fun with your team. Like it's one of the things that we do on a regular basis. I bring everybody together. I ask them a silly question and we just have the opportunity to connect. If you're not doing those things with your remote workforce or even the people that you're working with side by side on a day to day basis, you're missing an opportunity to, again, establish that trust and relationship with them. Because when you do get to the point where you have to have a hard conversation or hold somebody accountable, you want that foundation to have existed first. So I would love to hear from like Gabby or Lisa, like, what are we doing great or what are we doing well um, that works in that dynamic to kind of build that culture? Yeah, I mean, one thing that I think really helps with those fully remote teams um, to really, you know, to prevent the isolation that sometimes you feel when, you know, especially if you're at home by yourself and, and you're kind of in that little silo, besides the, the meetings that you do go through is we do well, uh, like lunch breaks that we do, those virtual lunch breaks or those quick 
uh, meet and greet coffee time that we will all hop in a meeting. We'll bring our coffee and just chit chat, you know, whether or not we're chit chatting about things at work or, or new, um, you know, policies or new laws that we just saw came out or an article we read, or just to see how things are going in our day-to-day -day life, our personal lives, you know, any vacations we have or talk about our children and our, or our pets. So we do really well about throwing those and sprinkling those in um, throughout the month to make, make sure we have that connection. I will speak to that, Kirk, the question of what are we doing well? And I will just say the thing that's great is that I now know what kind of a care bear I am because of the questions <laughs> that we've we've thrown out to the team. Um, and I know, you know, what my what my colleagues connect to as far. And I know it seems silly that we just use care bear, uh, a care bear as as a way to connect with each other. But we talked about why we're certain kinds of care bears. And so I know that one of my colleagues, you know, um, sees themselves in one way versus another one of my colleagues because of the way that they connect to care bears. Um, and so, you know, it just creates additional connection to each other. And once again, we can use those things as we're working together um, to better collaborate and relate to each other. Um, yeah, and so I think I think we do that really, really well. And these are things I think that we all look forward to as well. It adds a little bit of extra fun to our day. We look forward to, you know, dad joke Fridays and, um, you know, things of, of that nature that, that just bring us together. Yeah. And, it, and it's fun because when we have colleagues who are in different states and we know, you know, for example, this weekend, oh, the Detroit Lions are going to go up against the Chicago Bears. We have a lot of fun with that. And we have a little, you know, uh, you know, competitiveness going on about who's going to win the game this weekend. So we always throw a little bit of fun in there too with some competitive sports teams. Yeah. Something I love doing is having, you know, we, we, we're we at home. We don't really have water cooler chats or taking that 10 minute break to just go walk outside and chat with your colleagues. But I'll, I'll pick up teams and just call someone if they're free and take 15 minutes and get to know them and mm -hmm. kind of drop work for a little bit. So I would drive your employees to connect with other departments. Don't silo yourself in, in your same department. We love our team. We, you know, we, we work together, but get to know your other departments, get to know your teammates and, and cheer each other on. That's something I love here at, at Tandem. Little wins are big wins in our eyes. You know, um, the smallest things make the biggest difference. So cheering your teammates on really, really makes a difference. Yeah, that's, uh, as you were talking about that, uh, it made me think of, we, we do town halls mm -hmm. every every other week. We have a, it's a 30 minute town hall. Here's what's going on. New hires, promotions, changes we talk about nps client comments new clients that we bring on we talk about that but we also do every town hall a uh, an employee spotlight um and because we don't run into them in the halls all the time you know so we we take it's two minutes right hey here's here's jackie boyd here's where she lives here's what she does before she joined us here's where she worked here's what she likes to do you know and then jackie would you like to say a couple words right like I look forward to that because I, I always learn something, you know, I always learn like, oh, that's, that's what you do. That's mm -hmm. really neat. At the, in the end of the day, we're all human. We all have our lives mm -hmm. and it's nice to share that and share that human aspect that, hey, we're not all just working robots behind a, right. behind a screen. We all have our lives. And it, like I, I mentioned before, that personal connection is so important. I have lifelong friends that I've met in the PEO industry, and it's it's a, a wonderful network to be a part of. And, you know, I, I can't thank where I've been enough for those friendships. So I, I think it's very, very yeah. important to put a personal touch to your work. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's uh, let's see. Time check. I've got seven minutes. So uh, if we could uh, pop up uh, the contact um, information, uh, if you have questions um, after this, I think we have a slide uh, with my contact information. Um, so yeah, if you want, if you have questions, uh, feel free to put them in the chat. I'm um, not seeing any right now, but uh, if you think of anything, um, you know. After the presentation, uh, email me. Be happy to get back to you. Um, 
So yeah, you'll also get a, a, a recording of the webinar today um, in your inbox uh, shortly after after we finish up here. But um, yeah, I guess while we wait for for any questions, um, any any final thoughts, any parting thoughts, any takeaways that you'd like to? Yeah, to I, I like to just kind of um, share with our our clients, you know, because um, I know uh, with our clients, they, there's there's the compensation, you know, the financial aspect to some of this, and and how does that re you know reflect on their business and organization, and maybe some of their strategic goals. So, a research that I found was interesting by the Society of Human Resources found that. In order for an, a fully on-site position to be just as attractive as remote work, the commute had to be within 30 minutes and the pay had to be about 20% higher. So some things to think about, you know, regarding your, um, you know, when you're out there and you're trying to retain or, or re, uh, you know, attract and applicants to any open roles that you have, you know, really evaluate, you know, is it a role that maybe you could do on site or have a hybrid? Um, for hybrid roles, those can be equally attractive to a fully remote position if it's still within the 30 minutes of a commute, but only 10% higher in pay. So we want to really look at those things because you're also competing with other other organizations that might be fully remote. So just some some of those things to really consider when you're looking at um, you know your recruitment philosophy and, and how that's going for your organization. That's a really good point, Lisa. And that we've been we've kind of been focusing on this from a day one perspective of looking at like people coming into a existing remote position, but we can't not think about using this as a retention strategy as well. So if you've got an employee that is in office and they're thinking about leaving you, think about the impact of having to change that role from a hybrid position or remote position from a fully live in the office position. You might save an employee, you might save a significant expense if you have yeah. that flexibility to create a remote position or a hybrid position for that role. So I don't wanna be thinking too much in the box. Sometimes we can use this as a retention strategy as well. A quick question on that um, that study that you mentioned, Lisa, we got a question about, uh, is that was that a 30 minute mute 30 minute commute one way or was that round trip? Do you one know? way. One way. Yeah. From home yeah. to office. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, it, not not even taking it another step, um, not just retention. Um, but I know just from personal experience at tandem, we went from having a philosophy that, well, we need to have our HR business partners in and around the Chicago area, you know, so they can visit clients if needed. Well, we've, we've totally changed that. And it's, and as a result of that, we've opened up, you know, where we can hire people anywhere. Like Jackie, you're in Florida. We've yeah. hired HR business partner in Oklahoma city, but, but the impact of that is not just what well, we can hire anywhere. We can be more selective because we have decided we want to prioritize people who know PEO work. Well, you're not going to find if, if you're looking for people who know PEO work and are in Chicago, you're fishing in a pond that's this big. It's like, well, I don't care where they live. Like, well, now we can find the best people uh, for the role anywhere in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's really been a game changer. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I went from my HR position and facing clients, going to their locations, traveling all over the state of Florida mm -hmm. every single week to no travel. But we yeah. have these type of interactions. We're on camera. It, it seems seamless. You know, it's it's great to meet mm -hmm. in person, but we still have the the one on one interaction uh, face to face. Yeah. yeah. Well, we are just about at time and oh, let's see. We have we have time for one more question, though. Great. Um, practical examples. What are some practical examples of cheering for your remote workers other than just a verbal good job? What do you guys think? I can when, Oh, sorry, Gabby. I was just going to say, hey, they get a new certification, but let's let's cheer them on. That's hard. That's a lot mm -hmm. of studying. That's a lot but of studying you... and work that went into that. But I, th I think it's what would you um, 
what would you do other than just telling the employee, good job on the new certification? Yeah, yeah I think I, one of the, go ahead, Gabby. <laughs> I was just going to say what we do, I think really well at Tandem is we use our intranet to provide each other kudos. And so yeah. if we have done a good job or we see that someone else has done a good job or we've really enjoyed collaborating with someone on a, a project or yes, we know that someone got a new a uh, new certification, we can go to our intranet and give each other kudos and everyone else within the organization sees that. Yep. And I'll be honest, when you get a kudo, it feels great. And I know that other people feel the same way. So, yeah. That's different than just a manager saying, hey, good job. It's, it's and our kudos, it, it's everyone sees it, right? right. Everyone yeah. in the company sees it, but it's not just managers saying it, it's colleagues saying it to right. each other. Like, you helped me out with that. Thank you. I want to recognize you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We can go another step and recognize them during a department meeting just the same way, you know. And we talk a lot about technology and all the tools that we have at our disposal, but you can also do something very simple like do a handwritten note, like send something, send a note yeah. to them in the mail or send them a little gift card. Hey, go buy yourself coffee. Like it doesn't take a lot of expense to make the difference in somebody's day. So recognize them in those small ways makes a big impact. Yeah, I agree. I agree, especially for remote workers. You know, we have we have teams meetings all of the time, but then, you know, finding something in your mailbox like, oh, this is another it's another way of connecting with me. I think that makes a difference. Yeah. Well, we we are unfortunately out of time, but um, thank you, um, Jackie, Gabby, Lisa, Kirk. You guys are amazing and sharing sharing all that that you've seen. I think this is remote work is something we've all had to figure out together, and it's continuing to evolve. Um, so I could see us revisiting this topic again. Um, thank you to everyone who attended. Um, again, you'll get a recording of this, and if you have any questions afterwards. Um, please uh, let us know, but um, we will, uh, we'll do it again next month. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you everyone. Great Bye -bye. Day.